Hey everybody, my name's Andrew and we have 15 minutes to take a look around Ableton Live. Now this is your first time looking inside of Ableton. Don't sweat, I'm going to walk you through everything. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to attract your attention towards is this box here. Uh, and you can see that there's an arrow here and if you click that, it collapses the box. Click it again, it opens it back up. What we're looking at here is the browser window. Now the browser window is going to let us look through all of the factory sounds and effects and samples that come built into Ableton Live. So if we click on sounds, it has a whole list of subfolders here. So these are the master folders and then we've got the subfolders. We click on that and then we've got the actual instruments. So all of these here, we could click and we could drag them into Ableton and start using them. So this is our browser. This is what lets us find material in order to drag it into the screen and use it. So that brings me to the second part. We have this part here. This is where we put all of our clips. So we've got audio clips and we've got MIDI clips. Now the view that we're looking at right now is the session view and Ableton's unique because it has two different ways that you can look and interact with it. So if we just open up Able by def Ableton by default, this is the window that would come to. If we press tab on our keyboard, you'll notice that it's going to swap to another screen. So now this is the arrangement view. And pressing tab will toggle back and forth, but another way to click between them is by clicking on these two buttons here. Okay, now what you're essentially seeing is you're seeing a vertical representation of those channels in the session view, but if we press the tab, now we see everything horizontally and we're reading it like a book from left to right. When we're in this view, the session view, Essentially what we're working with is loops. So we would be playing a sample and it would be looping over and over again, or we'd be playing one shots that would just play once and then stop. There's no arrangement. So there's technically no arranged song. If we come back over to the arrangement view, this is where we can arrange a sequence that we would press play and it would play through a sequence and then we could go back to the start and play it again. So that's the main difference between them. The session view is for jamming live and for improvising ideas. The arrangement is for more of a finalized songwriting approach. Down the bottom, we have this big long bar here. Now this shows us a couple of different things. So first of all, we can click the arrow here to drop it away or to open it up. And if we were to start pulling in instruments and effects, they would start loading up in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate a piano. So we go to sounds, we come to piano, and then we can click on these to uh, audition how they sound. Um, We'll grab that one and we'll pull it in and we'll put it on this first MIDI channel. So I just clicked, I held that and I dragged to drop it onto this channel. And now you can see that that was called bells one high. And here we are, we have it loaded into here. So this is our strip. So the instrument goes first and it generates a sound. And then if we wanted, we can start stacking effects after it. So we can change the sound. We could grab a refurb, we could click, hold and drag and drop. And now that is going to make sound and then it's going to send into the reverb and then the reverb is going to affect it. So that is what's displayed down here on the effects rack and instrument rack. We also have another way of looking at things. So if I come into here and I find a audio sample, I click and drag and drop that audio sample on the timeline on this audio channel. If I come to this tab down here, it's going to show me the clip information. So I can toggle between seeing where all of my effects are. So I could come here and I could grab another reverb and I could either drop it on the channel here or I could drop it down here. And now I've loaded in a reverb. So the reverb is going to be affecting this audio and we can look at the audio clip here and all of the information for the audio clip is stored here. And finally, uh, if we create a MIDI clip, so I can select an area and go Control Shift M to make a MIDI clip. 
you can see that down here now we have a piano roll and we can click on that piano roll and we can draw in piano notes that you can see correspond. So that is the uh, bottom section here covered. Next, we will look at the channel. So we have one, two, three, four yellow buttons. Those yellow buttons correspond with the number of each of these channels. And if we were to click that channel, that channel button, it would then go gray. When it's gray, that means that you cannot play any audio through that channel. We've turned it off effectively. So even if we have this in our arrangement and we were to press play, there would be no audio that would come through to the speakers or our headphones. So this is how we turn on and off channels. We can then also solo channels. So if we have a whole lot of noises playing at once, we can press this blue solo key and then we can just hear that instrument playing with none of the other noise. So the blue button lets you solo. You can also hold control on your keyboard and press multiple channels to solo. So you don't just have to solo one channel. Next we have the record arm and we will talk about the record arm in another video. We just want to keep this to the point. This is the volume. So the volume in Ableton works from positive six all the way down to negative infinity with zero being unity. If you're pushing the volume above zero, you're likely to start to encounter digital clipping. Next to the volume, you have the pan. So the pan lets you send a signal from the left speaker to the right speaker or to the center. So if I grab that and pull it all the way down and then press play with spacebar, you'll only hear that in your left hand speaker. And if I pull it all the way to the right, you'll only hear it in the right hand speaker. So if I place it somewhere on the right, but not as extreme, you'll hear it more pronounced there, but you're also gonna hear a bit on the left as well. So that is panning and that is to create stereo separation. And that is the basic features of the channel strip here covered. The other features are more advanced. We'll cover them in another video. Up the top here, we have the ability to change the BPM. So you can see at the moment, it is 120 BPM. I can change that by just clicking and holding and dragging up or dragging down, or I can double click, uh, or I, sorry, I can just click and then type a value. Um, and that will change it for me. Uh, I have the metronome here. So if I want to listen to a metronome, maybe I'm playing an instrument in. I can turn that on or off. Next, I have the location of my cursor on the timeline. So this number is corresponding to the amount of bars. And you can see that one up to 77 bars are displayed here. Um, so if I grab that and pull that up, you see this blue marker, it is moving and corresponding with the location on the timeline. So this just lets you know where your cursor is, whereabouts you're playing. We've got play, which also is triggered by the space bar. So play and stop is both a space bar action. We can also click them, pressing stop once the audio has stopped, will send you all the way back to the beginning of the timeline. This is the recording button. This is if we want to start recording things in. And this is our loop brace function. So if we want to loop something over and over again, what we can do is we can click, drag to select an area, and then we can on the keyboard go control L to loop, or we could try again, select an area, right click, loop selection, select an area, right click, loop selection. Okay, so that lets us do that. This button enables or disables the loop brace. So when that loop brace is on, that means that we are going to go to the end and then we're gonna loop back around. So I'll give you a demonstration of that. We'll, we can grab the loop brace here, we can drag it, I can grab the end and shorten it, and then I can press play. And it's gonna loop back around and just keep playing over and over again in that space. So these numbers correspond to whereabouts on the timeline the loop starts and how long the loop goes for. 
down here we have a bunch of indicators so this uh this indicator here is our cpu indicator and it lets us know how much or how hard our computer is working in order to run our project they, we also have a hard drive disk indicator. So this is if we are pulling information off of our hard drive, but it's just taking a while and our hard drive is not fast enough to give us all of the information we need. You'll see that flashing. And then we have a couple of other indicators for MIDI coming in or MIDI going out. So that's important if you're using uh, hardware. If you want to add more channels, you can right click in this gray area and you can insert an audio track. You can also go Control T on your keyboard to add another. If you want to make a MIDI track, you right click and insert MIDI track, Control Shift T, uh, Control Shift T on the keyboard to make more MIDI tracks. And I can click them, hold Shift, and I can select a bunch of them and I can press Delete if I want to remove them all. Um, I can click on this channel and I can go Control R on my keyboard to rename and I can call this Piano. I can also right click and rename uh, inside of here. I can also create clips by going create, insert MIDI or insert audio track. Some simple keyboard commands to get you started. You can click on a clip by selecting the upper top of the bar and press Control D to duplicate. You can also go Control C, put your cursor on the timeline and then press Control V. You can click on the title, hold Control and drag to make a copy of something. And then you can press delete to remove it. You can right click on the timeline and select a smaller division for what it's showing you on the grid. So we can select 16 notes, 16th notes, and you'll notice that now there are many more fine lines. It's showing us 16th note divisions. Or we can make it larger by saying four bars. So now it will show us four bars. We can turn the grid off together, all together by clicking here, and now there is no grid, and we can place things anywhere on the timeline. This might be difficult for you to get things in time, so maybe as a beginner, that's not a very wise idea to have that turned off. For the final part of this video, we're going to grab some samples and I'm just going to show you some very quick arrangement. So we'll come into samples, we'll come into mind mirror samples, kick samples, and we'll grab a kick. So that kicks fine. I'm going to click up here where it turns into an, where your cursor turns into an hourglass, click and drag. I'm going to right click here and insert a new audio track. I'm going to right click on the timeline and I'm going to make sure that I've got quarter note divisions. I'm going to grab a kick and I'm going to drop it on my timeline. I'm going to click on the title of that click, kick, sorry, hold control and drag that out to duplicate, drag that out to duplicate, drag that out to duplicate. I'm going to click and I'm going to select that entire area and I'm going to go control L to loop it around and around. And then I'll press the space bar to start playing it. We cannot hear it because I have this channel soloed. So if I click that blue S, it's gonna unsolo that channel so we can hear our kick drum. You'll notice that at the end of that kick drum, there's a clicking sound. And that is because the sample is not going all the way back to zero volume before the end of the clip. So what we need to do is we can roll off the end with a volume. So what's happening here? As I can grab this little node and what that's doing is it's saying the volume is going to roll down like this. So it's going to put a smooth end on the tail of that kick drum. So now that I've done that, I'm going to select that whole area. I'm going to control D, control D, control D to duplicate it across. And now they all have that volume fade. I'm going to press stop to go back to the beginning of the timeline and then press the space bar to play again. Okay, great, so now that kick drum is playing without a click at the end. Next, I'm gonna create another audio channel. I'm gonna right click, insert audio track. I'm gonna collapse down that. I'm gonna open up this bass sample. We're, that one's not good enough. We're gonna find another bass sample. Okay, this one sounds great. It's nice and deep. I'm going to put that on eighth notes. I'm gonna place it on the off beat. So beat one, beat two, 
beat three, beat four. And then if we break it down even further, on beat, off beat, on beat, off beat. Okay, so I'm going to select that area, copy, copy, copy. So now we're going kick base, kick base, and I'm just going to increase the BPM. So we're going to go 134. Okay, let's have a listen and see how that sounds. Great, so we're starting to get a groove happening. Next, we need some hats. So we'll create another audio sample. We'll come into these hats and we're going to select an open hat. Okay, that one sounds great. We're going to also put that on the offbeat. But for this one, we're going to do a little bit of audio manipulation. So we're going to grab the end of that and we're going to pull it short. I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to change my grid divisions to 16th notes. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull it so that we've got a volume fade. Let's have a listen. Okay, we'll copy, duplicate, 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 and then we'll come over to the volume and the pan. We're going to bring the volume down six decibels and we're going to pan it 15 to the right. So now we're creating stereo separation, we've reduced the volume so it's a bit more balanced against the kick and the bass, and we're using all of the features that we've talked about in our 15 minutes inside of Ableton. So I hope that that was extremely helpful for you. I have much more comprehensive videos, you'll find the links and the pop-up windows that will contain more. So thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in another video.